Hi everybody, my name is Susie and I'm a second year math student here at the University of Warwick. Now today I wanted to talk to you guys about the differences between doing a bachelor's and doing a master's at Warwick. Um, obviously there are lots of different variations for the course, um, lots of maths with other things, but I'm just going to be talking about pure maths um, because <laughs> that's, that's what I know. Um, okay, so first of all, to get this out of the way, uh, I did join Warwick on a bachelor's, so that's the three-year degree. Um, the alternative, you can do a master's of mathematics, which is a four-year degree. So, obviously, at the end of the bachelor's, you come out with a bachelor's of science in mathematics. But at the end of a master's degree, you come out with both the bachelor's of science and your master's um, in mathematics. So, first of all, you know, what are, what are the key differences, I guess? Um, at, at Warwick, they are remarkably similar degrees. Um, for the first three years, because Warwick offers a lot of optional modules, you can basically do the exact same things in Masters as you can in the uh, Bachelors. The only key difference in your first three years is going to be the fact that to stay on a Masters degree, you need to do a lot more Maths modules. Whereas um, in, a, in a bachelor's degree, you can get away with doing not as many maths modules and still come out of it with a, uh, a maths bachelor's at the end. You have to do a higher content of mathematic material for a master's because, <laughs> I mean, obviously. Then, obviously, at the end of three years, uh, if you're on a bachelor's, that's it, you're good to go. But if you're doing the master's, you then continue on to your fourth year. Your fourth year, again, it's a lot of optional content, but the one thing that is required from you if you do a master's is that you have a fourth year project. So this will be something where you're really, you know, involved in some research that's just on on the frontiers of what's happening in maths at that moment. So it's a very practical, um, you know, application of research and application of maths because mathematicians out there are actually discovering new things right now and you'd be involved in that and you'd be writing up a report on that um, and all that lovely stuff. One of the really common misconceptions I think there is is the different requirements to get onto the two uh, courses because obviously you know doing a master's you have to love maths and you have to be very very good at maths um, somewhat more so than doing the bachelor's but you don't actually need to have higher grades to get onto the masters. Um, currently, the applications for the 2022 year, both the bachelors and the masters require A star, A star, A plus A2 in the step. Um, there are obviously further, further restrictions, further things that apply. Um, this video isn't about that, so I'll just, that will be included in the links. Um, but yeah, both of them require the same grades at A level. So, I guess that's something where I know I've heard people in the past be like they tried to apply to a university with for the bachelors and then once they'd got into the university they'd then try to swap to the masters because they thought that you know if they'd done worse at A level then that was like a viable path but that's that's really not needed at Warwick um you can do either on the same grades um and Warwick is actually very very helpful about swapping between the two of them. Um, as I said earlier, you know, up until uh, the fourth year, basically the courses are very, very similar other than the different maths content of them. But one thing that does happen, to happen is that, you know, at the end of second year, which is the year that I'm in currently, if you don't average at 65%, uh, which is considered a high 2-1 or above, then from their experience, they find that students who don't get those grades struggle on a master's and then they will you know then at that point it might be more useful to use a student to take a step from the master's down to the bachelor's so that you're more likely to you know get a good grade in the bachelor's and not have to go through a master's if you're not going to get a good grade from it um whereas on the contrary you know if you are doing the the right amount of maths and at the end of the second year you've done that 65 percent you've got those grades it's very, very easy to swap up to a master's. That's actually something I am looking at doing currently. Uh, I only applied for a bachelor's because I wasn't sure how much I'd want to do. I wasn't sure if I'd want to have four years at university. Um, but now I'm here, definitely is something that appeals to me. Um, and that's another thing that's obviously really important to take into consideration 
when you're considering a bachelor's versus a master's. Um, one extra year at university might not sound like a lot, but <laughs> but considering, you know, it's it's a whole year when other people might have gone into jobs, they might have gone into industry, they might have gone into internships or whatever. Doing another year at university isn't necessarily going to be the best thing for everyone, but on the contrary, um, coming out of university with a master's instead of a bachelor's is going to look more impressive, I guess. And especially if you want to go into further academia, then doing a master's is obviously like a no-brainer. Um, one of the slightly more difficult things, though, is funding. So obviously, you know, people are going to be going through different methods of funding and whatever. But I know that personally, um, I'm relying a lot on student loans at the moment from the government and I couldn't get student loans to fund my master's uh, if and hopefully when I do take my master's. So at that point, I am going to have to be uh, taking out longer term loans from the university itself or I'm going to have to be getting a job. Um, whereas, you know, these first three years doing the bachelor's, it's a lot. It's a lot easier for me because I can rely on those student loans from the government. So, again, something to take into consideration. Uh, that being said, obviously, um, as I've already mentioned, Warwick makes it very, very easy to kind of swap between doing a bachelor's and a master's. So it's not necessarily a decision that you have to make immediately. It's just something you can kind of keep in mind when you're doing the two things. So both of them obviously have different advantages and different disadvantages. Um, I know some people who are on the masters who who applied for a masters and then kind of realised one year, two years in that maybe academia wasn't good for them and that they would rather you know get out after the first three years. But then there are other people like myself who maybe weren't so sure what they wanted to do. Kind of, I I did see it as you know like taking the easy option by just doing the bachelors because that's less of a commitment doing three years as opposed to four um but now I'm here even though obviously um I've had my struggles with academia I've had my struggles in general um doing another year is something that would appeal to me and it's something that I'm hopefully looking looking forward to doing so as I'm kind of wrapping up this video which I'm aware has been a short one um one thing that I really did want to emphasize is just you know, how much freedom the, the courses at Warwick give you. Um, I mean, I've mentioned in previous videos, first of all, how you get a lot of optional modules at, at Warwick when you're doing the maths courses. That's the same for both the masters and the bachelors. Um, so for example, in the third year, both on the bachelors and the masters, it's entirely optional modules. You can do entirely what you want to do. So, you know, two people both doing a bachelor's are going to have completely different um, experiences. So <laughs> to some extent, kind of comparing the bachelor's and the master's seems a bit like a moot point because work gives you the freedom to kind of personalise your experience anyway. Um, but further than that, work has been very, very helpful to me personally with my experiences of trying to swap from a bachelor's to a master's. And you know, from, from anecdotal uh, experience. I've had friends who work has been very, very helpful to them swapping from a master's to a bachelor's. So yeah, um, it's not something that, <laughs> that needs to be sorted before you go off to university, because if you do end up coming to work, then they're going to be very, very helpful for you figuring out what you want and helping you get towards what you want. But hopefully, you know, if you go into the process a bit better informed then there's going to be less you know stress trying to work out what it is that you want which at the end of the day can't hurt so yeah um just as like a final summary the two courses are very very similar uh, obviously the only difference between the course for the first three years is that on a master's you have to do a higher mathematical content um the entry requirements for the two courses were the same in this year they were the same when i applied um, the main real difference is that a master's, you come out of it with a master's degree, having done one more year to um, complete your mathematical research project, along with other optional modules. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, if you enjoy maths, it doesn't necessarily mean that 
a master's is going to be better for you over a bachelor's because you can enjoy maths and still want to go into industry or you can enjoy maths and not have the financial support to be able to afford a fourth year or you can enjoy maths and not want to be doing the mathematical research project for example you know there are lots of reasons that people decide to pick one course over the other and none of them are really wrong I hope this has been uh, in some way useful to you guys I know it's been a very contradictory video but say lovey um and I'll see you guys in the next one.